Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 205. Start writing no matter what. The water doesn't flow until the faucet is turned on. Louis Lamour. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my Indie Film Hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Video Blocks. Now, guys, when I was shooting my show for Legendary Pictures, uh, and I did that 96 pages in four days, I actually got into post, and we used a lot of stock footage, stock sounds, and even some uh, graphics from Video Blocks. They are an amazing resource. With your membership, you are granted the rights to use that footage forever in perpetuity on any projects you want to. So if you want to try a seven-day free trial, and by the way, anything you download during those seven days is yours to keep. And if you decide to stay, you get 84% off the yearly membership. It is well worth it, guys. Trust me, if you do a lot of production, it is something you really need. So just head over to videoblocks.com forward slash hustle. Now today on the show, we have returning champion Michael Haig. Uh, Michael Haig, if you guys are not aware is a a screenwriting consultant and overall screenwriting guru that has been on the show before in episode 55. And he has written many books, but the must-have on every screenwriter's shelf is Writing Screenplays That Sell, which is a mandatory reading for any screenwriter out there. And Michael and I partnered on a online course called the Screenplay and Storybook Blueprint, The Hero's Two Journeys, where Uh, is with Michael and Chris Vogler, the author of The Writer's Journey. And that is easily one of the best-selling online courses we've ever done. And I wanted to have Michael back on the show because today we're going to talk about how to pitch your story in 60 seconds. And Michael wrote an entire book specifically called Selling Your Story in 60 Seconds. So whether you're a screenwriter, a filmmaker who's trying to sell their, or, or not sell their story, but pitch their story to uh, somebody who you want to be in the movie or or, or be part of your movie, an investor, uh, an agent, uh, an actor, a crew member that you want to get to work on the film. Uh, this is very, very important and obviously very important for screenwriters trying to pitch their stories to producers and studios. And we also have, of course, an online course that Michael and I worked on and we'll have a special discount for you at the end of this episode. But in this conversation, I was able to weasel out as much information out of Michael as possible for you guys to really understand how to pitch your story in 60 seconds like a pro. So without any further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Michael Haig. I'd like to welcome back to the show, Michael Haig. Michael, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Oh, my pleasure. It's great to be back. You know, your 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 episode was probably one of the most downloaded episodes uh, in the history of uh, Indie Film Hustle uh, it, because it was one of the early ones. I think I don't even remember what the number was. I think it was like 20 or 30. Uh, and we're now getting we're, we're croaching in on 200 episodes uh Jeez. soon yeah i'm 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 busy <laughs> and uh, but that episode was very well received and the course that that we partnered on um the hero's two journeys the story uh storyteller's blueprint uh has done extremely well and a lot of the listeners have taken that course uh so uh, thank you so much for coming back and just sharing your knowledge Oh, absolutely. And congratulations. I didn't realize the number had gotten that high, but it's an honor to be back. And uh, and I'm looking forward to talking about this because this is this is uh, a significantly different topic than the other one. This is this is in the selling arena rather than the creating arena. So exactly. This be fun. Exactly. Because, you know, we, I brought you back because we're going to talk about pitching. And I think that's a mystery for a lot of uh, filmmakers, screenwriters, people in general. They just don't understand how to pitch. And it's such an important skill. Um, so we kind of put, I wanted to kind of dig into, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that you work on, on your book, which is called selling your story in 60 seconds. And, uh, I wanted to get into it. So what is a 60 second pitch exactly? Well, uh, this is a pitch that one would give either a novelist or a screenwriter would give, or in this case, screenwriter primarily, uh, when they have a very short amount of time, number one, 
And they have one goal and one goal only, and that is to get somebody to read their script. Or if you're a filmmaker in another arena, to get somebody to look at your short film or your piece of work that you want to use as a sample. But as opposed to, say, a pitch meeting, Mm -hmm. In Hollywood, once you reach a certain echelon, you might be invited to sit down in an agent's office, sit down in a production company's office and discuss your screenplay or discuss your idea for a script. That's all well and good, but you're never going to get to that meeting until someone has read your script and they're not going to read your script unless you know a persuasive way to get them to take a look at it. So this is all about just that. Will you take a look at this and read it? And then my script will stand on its own if you'll only take a look. Right. So it's basically the elevator pitch, if you will. Yeah. If you're going to a very high floor, I mean, <laughs> if it takes the elevator 60 seconds to get up there. Yeah. I mean, the 60 seconds is not a precise sure, thing, of course. but it, there's another context for it. It's not just elevator, but it's a phone call. But also if you go to a pitch fest mm -hmm. or a pitch mart, or if you're going to a writer's conference, a, a screenwriting conference, and you just have the opportunity to corner someone who has a degree of power in Hollywood who's in the business in the hallway or something, and, and you can say, you know, I'd love to tell you about my script. Or sometimes if you're just schmoozing with someone in that context, they'll ask you, well, what am I working on? You can't take 10 minutes of their time to talk about all the nuances and details of your masterpiece. You've got to do it in a very short period of time. But in 60 seconds, you can give someone enough information about the script that they can decide whether or not they want to read it. But you want them to decide yes and no based on an understanding of what the promise of it is and not because they don't you you told them the start of it and nothing more because that's all you have the time for. Now, what are the top reasons why pitches go wrong? Well, to me, without question, the number one mistake that screenwriters make when they're pitching their project is no matter how short the time span, they try and tell their story. And you just simply can't do that. I, I say sometimes, if you've got a screenplay for a movie uh, and that, that you can tell the story in 60 seconds, then you've got a story for a 60-second film because that's, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to squeeze in, this is how it opens, and this is who the characters are, and then this happens, and then all at once a body is found, and then now we're... And if you're at a pitch mark where they say you've got, say, 10 minutes, and you go longer than that, they're just going to take you away, and you won't even finish. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're only given five minutes, but the thing to remember is even five minutes is too long when you have a five-minute slot because you've got to have some time left after you pitch it so the, the prospective buyer of that script can talk about it and ask you questions mm -hmm. and find out the details they want to know, not the details that you thought were so critical to put in the pitch. Now, how do you target buyers and, and target people who might be interested in either buying your script or watching your film or even giving you money for your film? How do you target buyers? Well, what you want to basically do is you want to follow in the footsteps of people who have been successful at marketing and selling or getting scripts optioned that are similar to yours. Similar meaning not they have the same plot, but they're in the same genre. They have the same general budget. Um, if yours is a period piece, you want to find out, well, who who has produced period pieces in the past if it's a horror film who are the companies you know making horror films so the way you can do that the number one resource i always recommend is the internet movie database mm -hmm. imdb.com mm -hmm. except that for a very small amount of money you can get a subscription to imdb pro.com and when you have the pro it means Let's say, let's say you've written a horror film, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, you want to find out, well, who is making or who has made horror films recently that have been successful, and you find out that this Friday Jigsaw opens, which is kind of a spinoff on Saw. the Saw series. Okay, so you can go to imdb.com on your computer, and you can just put the, the search on Jigsaw. And it will have pages or a lot of screens worth of information. 
the title, the name of every character and who plays that character, the name of all the cast and crew. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. But here's the thing. It'll also list, say, the producers and the production companies involved, not the studios. And we can explain that in a second. But you check out what are the who are the producers and the production companies. Then if you have the pro version, which is, as I say, a minimal investment, then you can click on them and they will give you contact information. Mm-hmm. So it will you will then find out, well, this is the address and this is the phone number of this production company. Mm-hmm. And so then what you do, either in that entry or by calling the office, you find out who is the development director or the head of development or the story editor, whatever the title is, who's in the business, who has the job at that company of getting scripts into the company, find out that person's name, and then you uh, you call them cold or you send an email. You can send a letter, but letters aren't really, they're kind of passe anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's like sending a fax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can do a fax. That's still somewhat uh, doable. <laughs> but whatever it is, you want to try and track that person down and get them on the phone. And guess what you're going to do if you can get through to them and have them on the phone in their busy schedule and they're only going to give you 60 seconds. Guess how you're going to use it? You're going to give them your 60 second pitch. Now, can you discuss the seven steps of a great 67, a great 66, 60 second pitch? Uh, No, because there's eight. (laughs) Well, then there you go. What are the eight? (laughs) So I guess the answer is yes, I can with a bonus step. Okay. So um, here's, here's how to look at it. A pitch is four steps of preparation and and four steps of presentation. Mm -hmm. So there are four things to do to get ready to give the pitch, and then four things you need to do to actually give the pitch when you're on the phone or across the table at the pitch fest or whatever the situation might be. Mm -hmm. So the first four steps of preparation. Um, Number one, you need to to, uh, review all of these steps begin with, uh, I apologize if in the background you hear a blower. My next door neighbor has the garden. Yes, there. So, yes, so, uh, no worries. Welcome to Los Angeles. Yes. Uh, no God. one rakes leaves. We if there was, use blowers, you know? If there was just one thing I could do in my lifetime is to find a way to get rid of those damn things. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's just, they make, they, they contribute to noise and pollution. Fuel depletion. Yeah, exactly. At the same time. Okay. So back to the issue at hand. Step number one is review. That means you look at the story of your screenplay through a particular eye. And what you're looking for are the key elements of that story that your potential buyer needs to know to make the decision of whether they want to see it. So this is instead of telling the entire story, you're going to present your pitch in such a way that you reveal these these things. Mm -hmm. So I, what I need to do now, if it's okay, is I should go through the list of what those key components are. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. So I'll I'll make it very quick. And then taking the course, of course, I go into detail of all of them, but here's what a potential buyer wants to know. First of all, who's the hero of the story? Who's the protagonist? Who are we rooting for? Next of all, where is that character at the beginning of the story, before anything extraordinary happens, when we are first introduced to that character, what are they doing? What's their job? What's the setting? What's their life like? What has their life been like for some time? It's the introduction of that character. Number three, why do we care about this person? Do we feel sorry for her? Do we? Is she in some kind of jeopardy? Is she a good-hearted, kind person, so she's likable? Is she very skilled? Any of those qualities could create empathy, but you have to create, you have to let us know why we will connect with this character as we watch her on the screen. The fourth thing is, what's the opportunity? That's my term for the first key event of the story that is going to start it moving forward. It's something that happens to the hero about 10% of the way into the script that has never happened before and is going to get them moving forward, moving towards 
into some new situation. So the next thing is, what, where is that new situation? So it may be they start out in their home and then they find out they're going to inherit some money. So now they're going to move to, they have to go to England, collect the inheritance. Or um, if Luke Skywalker starts off on his planet and then he sees the, the uh, holograph from Princess Leia and that's going to take him into a new situation where he'll meet Obi-Wan and so on. Next point that you want to establish is what's the hero's goal? This isn't just a situation. This is the visible finish line that this character needs to cross at the end of the movie. So is this a movie about stopping a serial killer? Is it a movie about stopping an invasion? Is it about winning the love of another character? Is it about winning a competition or escaping from danger? But whatever it is, it needs to be visible and specific and have a clearly defined endpoint. So what is that? Next, what is the conflict? What are the big obstacles the hero is going to have to overcome to accomplish that goal? If it's the king's speech, the goal is to give a speech, but the obstacles are what make it enjoy it, you know, emotional and enticing. And that is he's got a terrible stammer. He's going to have to take over his king. He's got to lead his country into World War II. That's, that's the conflict. Uh, the next item is the plan. We need to know, well, okay, so how is the hero going to go about stopping the alien invasion or winning the love of the other character? And finally, and this is not within the story, but it's something important to think about, what are a couple antecedents to your script? So what you want to do is, in the pitch, you're going to convey uh, or you're going to mention a couple movies that you could point to and say, well, those two movies made money, so mine is likely to make money. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the plot is the same. It means they're in the same genre. They have about the same budget. They appeal to the same audience. They have a tone that's similar because there are romantic comedies that are dark and romantic comedies that are silly and romantic comedies that are fairly dramatic you want to pick a couple antecedents that fit into the subcategory of yours. And that's it. I think that was uh, nine qualities of the story that you're going to convey. Now, I haven't talked about how yet but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the class will reveal that. But whatever you're saying in the 60 seconds, you need to mention these things because that's what's going to determine their decision. Um, mm -hmm. as Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So another thing, I think sometimes mistakes that I see too is well, and I've done it in the past too, is when you pitch, you when you when you compare it to another movie, uh, they, they use a movie that was unsuccessful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which was like, yeah. you know, my movie's you just know, like Ishtar. Like really? Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> Suicide Squad all day. You're like. <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. You don't. You don't really want to go there. Uh, you got to be careful. It needs to be somewhat recent it needs to be within correct within the lifetime of the the person you're pitching to <laughs> yeah, ishtar, ishtar dated 20s. me yeah ishtar yeah, dated me dated you. yeah <laughs> and you don't and don't pitch casablanca either <laughs> even right. though you think it's a great movie it's my favorite it's not but, relevant you know, it's yeah, not re 10 years 10 years is a good time but but the 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 thing is that the mistake some people make in their pitches they'll say well this is uh, this is like up Titanic and, uh, and King Kong. Oh yeah. They <laughs> so, combine. Yeah. They so, combine. Yeah. yeah. And, and because, well, like up, it has a talking dog and like Titanic, it's a love story and whatever. <laughs> and you can't do that. There've got to be three, there've got to be two movies that, that are in exactly the same genre. Mm -hmm. And 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 the more money those movies have made, the better it is. Because subconsciously, what you're doing to the buyer is you're you're saying, without this is the subtext is, look, uh, those movies made a lot of money, so obviously you're going to be interested in my script because it's going to make the same kind of money. Because you you need to realize that in Hollywood, the people in power aren't necessarily story experts. But they do. They are good bean counters most of the time, and they know what box office success looks like. They don't know why it was a box office success, but they figure, well, if this can be the next uh, Titanic, I'm all for it. <laughs> right. Now, what are a few things that people should never do when pitching an idea? 
never well besides going on and on uh <laughs> don't don't tell the person hearing the pitch how great the story is or why <laughs> it's going to be successful we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor and now back to the show right. don't say this is going to appeal to the mass audience. Don't say this is, this is going to be an earth-shaking story. Don't make any comments or commentary or judgments about your own script. Mm-hmm. Let the story stand on its own. Let the pitch stand on its own. So if, if this sounds like an emotionally involving, commercially successful story or one that could be, they will conclude that for themselves. You don't need to say, and I, I mean, I've had people pitch me things that says, I swear this is going to be bigger than Avatar. Oh, and I say, no, it's not going to be bigger than Avatar. And uh, our company probably isn't interested because that's not your job. It's my job to conclude that. Your job is to tell me just enough about your script that makes me want to read it. Now, how do you gear up for a pitch? Like, what are the like the things that you should bring into battle, if you will, with you besides the pitch? Um, my suggestion is nothing. Okay. <laughs> Very pointedly, uh, or a, a bet. See, here's the thing: when you go to a pitch fest, this happens a lot. They'll mm-hmm. say, "Bring a leave behind." Mm-hmm. So you have a one page, or people bring treatments, mm-hmm. or something like that. Well, if they say that, my advice is, okay, go ahead and write a one-page synopsis of the story. But here's what you don't do. You definitely don't put it on the table as the pitch began. Mm -hmm. Don't ever set anything in front of the person hearing the pitch. Because if you do, if you give them something to read, they'll be reading instead of listening to you. Mm -hmm. And you want them to pay attention to you. You can have it in your briefcase or backpack or whatever and then if they say well i really my boss insists that we take back an outline then you can whip it out and say okay good well we have this and sometimes i'll even recommend that someone when they ask that question the uh, writer say okay look uh i know you want to see a synopsis but one page just won't do my script justice (laughs) how about if i email it to you And you just read the first 10 pages. And if you don't like it by page 10, just trash it. Just delete it, no harm, no foul. But if it pulls you in, as I know it will, then you'll get a much better sense of what the value is. They still might say, no, that's against the rules at our company. And then if they insist, give them the leave behind. But don't show it or anything else. There are people who recommend taking to a pitch things like pictures of actors who could play the role mm-hmm. i'm not i'm not a fan because for two reasons one i personally am not a multitasker so i'm either looking at a picture of matt damon which means i'm thinking about matt damon mm-hmm. and thinking to myself matt damon costs a fortune we're not going to get matt damon for this script so i'm losing interest by looking at that and and instead You want to create a movie inside my mind. That's what you want me looking at. Mm -hmm. So you want to tell this pitch. And as you mentioned, these elements, I'm picturing this character. I'm picturing this setup. I'm picturing the obstacles that your hero will face. So you want me in my head, not looking at something else. Now, is there a big difference or or different approaches for pitching when you're pitching at a pitch fest versus a executive's office versus an elevator? Well, in the office, it's different because mm-hmm. in the office, they are expecting you to come in ready to have a 10 to 20 minute conversation. Mm-hmm. What I often recommend in those situations is you can start that meeting by giving the 60 second pitch and then letting that be the doorway into a longer conversation. Many times, though, when you go into an office meeting for a pitch, It's more about something they've already been pitched or a script they've already looked at. And the Mm -hmm. purpose of the meeting is to discuss it. And that's a different animal altogether. The one thing is in a pitch fest, you have a finite amount of time, but you've paid money to do it. And so they're expecting you to be there on an elevator in those, you know, grab them when you can moments Mm -hmm. or even in a cold call. 
you always want to kind of ask permission. You want to say, geez, I'd, I'd love to tell you about the script I'm working on. Would this be a good time to do that? Or I don't want to intrude. Or when you get somebody on a cold call, you can say, look, I know how busy you are, but but I, I, I've just completed a script. I'm sure, you know, it's something I really think you'd be interested in because, because it's in the same arena as this movie you just you know, did, or you mentioned something you have in common, like, uh, I know you're a graduate of University of Oregon, and so am I, and I thought you might be willing to let me take 60 seconds. But you need to ask if it's okay to give the pitch if it's an unexpected uh, confrontation or, right. or connection, something like that. Um, the, the, it, the one other difference in a pitch fest that's to your advantage is if you paid money for 10 minutes, you get 10 minutes. And one of the other reasons to have a pitch that's, you know, 60 seconds or at least under two minutes is then if they say no, and you have another project that might also be of interest, then you can say, well, we still have, uh, you know, seven minutes left, or even if it's a five minute slot and you've only took take 60 seconds, you've only got four minutes left. And I have another idea that's for a romantic comedy. Uh, could, could, would you be willing to let me present that to you right now? And so if you truly have two pitches ready, that's the only occasion where you'd pitch twice is if they say no to the first. Now, do you, you, you kind of touched upon it earlier, but do you have any specific advice on how to establish rapport with the person that you're pitching with. Yeah, I kind of got, I know you asked me about the eight steps and I took so long with step one, we got sidetracked. Sure. But, uh, but anyway, it's it's after you review your story and figure those things out, then then you want to research the person you're going to pitch, pitch to. You want to write out and script the pitch and you want to rehearse it, rehearse, rehearse. That's the preparation. The presentation is, that that first R is rapport or relationship. And there are two ways that are very effective at doing that. Mm -hmm. One is finding a common experience. If you've been recommended to someone on the phone, then you want to say, you know, Bob said I should give you a call. He thought you might be interested in this project. And he also said you owe him a lunch or something like that. So you mention the person who's given you the referral. Um, if it's a pitch fest or if it's a cold call, and you don't know the person, but you do know that uh, they're a golf fan uh, and you, you know, you uh, were a caddy for Tiger Woods once or you went to the same school or, or you have something in common. Great. Now, that's not going to happen very often. I mean, really, how many of us know people that are in power in Hollywood <laughs> or, or I mean, most of us, if we well, do. You, you do know a few people, sir. I, I know a few, but, but I, I don't. Okay, I could I could use an abacus to count them. I don't need a calculator. Let's say. Okay, so then what you do to establish rapport is you acknowledge them for something, mm -hmm. um, and it might be because you've researched them, you know that they, like I mentioned earlier, suppose someone has made horror films, you can you can say, you know, I was a huge fan of this of the ring if they would produce mm -hmm. that movie let's mm -hmm. say but don't just say that just say why say because it scared the crap out of me or because what i loved about that horror film was that that actually it developed a relationship between the mother and son or don't just say i i'm a huge fan and let it go at that because anybody can say that but tell why you were a fan of the movie or the or a movie that they represented the writer for or something like that now a warning is when you go to a pitch fest it's possible you won't know anything about who you're pitching to mm -hmm. or it's going to be an underling at the company but you can always acknowledge someone for this if they're listening to your pitch, and that is they're taking the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So you can say something like, look, uh, you know, I know that you'd probably rather be doing something other than this pitch fest, but it means a lot to somebody like me who flew here all the way from Jerkwater, USA, <laughs> just to have a chance to talk to you, and I want to tell you how much I appreciate it. And and that should be genuine. You should really be grateful. And no one on the planet is immune to an acknowledgement. It just creates a connection when you say, I sincerely say, I want to thank you for something you did. So that is probably your strongest tool for rapport. And can you continue with the, the rest of the steps after the rapport? What was the other ones of the eight or the eight steps? Yeah. 
So the next one is uh, I in in the in our in my uh, goal to make everything R or sound like R, which mm -hmm. is the word right. Mm -hmm. uh, the next is reveal. This is when you actually give the pitch part of the pitch. You mm -hmm. you reveal those nine elements of the story. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. And, and uh, I have a tip for that too. And that is, or a, a contrarian suggestion. Mm -hmm. A lot of people recommend that the way to start a pitch is give the title and the log line. And mm -hmm. I strongly recommend against that because titles until you know what a movie's about, hearing the title is usually meaningless. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, it, it sounds ludicrous now because it's become part of the culture. But if you heard in 1974 that there was a, or 72 before the book came out, that there was a movie coming up called Jaws, you would have no idea what it was about. Right. Okay. But if you said it was about, it's about a great white shark terrorizing a community and now three guys have to go out in a little boat and try and destroy it. And then you end that pitch by saying, so my, so my screenplay entitled Jaws is the story of three men trying to defeat a great white shark. So you put the title and the log line at the end of your presentation of those elements instead of at the beginning. And otherwise, it's pretty much going through them in the order I mentioned. Mm -hmm. A good way to begin might say it might be to tell them how you came up with the idea. So instead of just jumping in and saying, well, Susan Smith is a nuclear physicist, you say, I've always been a huge fan of, of thrillers that have strong love stories underneath. And here's where you can add movies like Three Days of the Condor or I'm trying to think of another or Body Heat, let's sure. say. I'm dating myself with yeah. those two. They take the money. <laughs> because notice how now you're slipping in those antecedents without using the word antecedent. You're saying, I've always been a fan of movies like this, but in and so my thriller, the difference is that the 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 man the her, hero falls for is really a hitman who's been assigned to kill it. Okay. So you start with how you came up with the idea, it grew out of kind of movies you loved or grew out of a true story or something that happened to you in the past. And then you say, so I started thinking, what if, and then you get into the hero and the setup and those other elements. And then you're sort of off to the races. It's so it's, it's when you're, when you're doing that, it's because a lot of people have seen pitch at pitch fest and, and just pitch in general, they just kind of go right to it. They just jump right in and just like, you know, it's like a machine and there's no warmth to it. There's no connection. They're just like, they're literally a robot because they've been trained to be that way. And they've rehearsed so much that it, it's literally just a machine where you're sitting down and making a connection with another human being. And by doing what you're suggesting makes a lot more sense to me to like how you came up with the idea and what movies you like, because that's another way to connect with the person you're pitching with, like if they like the movie of three, you know, three days in a condor, like, Oh yeah, I love that movie. Is it kind of like that? And it starts connecting different synapses in their mind and emotions already before you even start pitching. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think the way to think about a pitch is it's not a speech and it's not an ad. It's a conversation. Right. And actually, it's a conversation that you and everyone listening to this has had before, because all of us and all of you have recommended movies to people. Mm -hmm. You've said, oh, I just saw The Big Sick. And mm -hmm. what's that? Well, it's, a, it's about this guy, and he's from Pakistan, and da-da-da, and you tell the high points, and you say, I just loved it. And I, it was hilarious, but I loved the relationship. You have just given a pitch for a movie you saw. You've done it a hundred times. You right. had that conversation. All you're doing in a pitch meeting or on the phone here is you're having a conversation about a movie you love. It's just a movie that hasn't been made yet. Now, can you please impress upon people how important a log line is? Not in the pitch because you asked to do it at the end, but just in general, people kind of forget the log line. They just write a sentence. It's very – it's a, it's an art in itself, isn't it? Uh yeah, I guess. I, I don't want to make it sound too lofty because okay. then it sounds something difficult. Sure. What, but, but 
I, I think of log lines this way. A log line is a sentence that's going to convey, convey the three foundation elements of any story, mm-hmm. and that is character, desire, and conflict. When I said, and so Jaws is a, it, it's about a, a great, it's about three guys in a small boat who have to stop a great white shark that is, that is, uh, terrorizing their the beach town i didn't say it exactly that way because i don't remember exactly but that's it all i was saying is character three guys in a boat goal destroy a great white shark conflict it's a great white shark and it's terrorizing their their village and wants to kill them right that's it i i it's not so much about honing some magic with words it's nice if you can do that but it's much more important that you say character desire conflict because without knowing or saying those three things, anything else included is not going to give me an idea of what I'm going to go see. Now, you can pick, you, you want to think about the exact words to create a vivid image of it or be very clear about it. You can add a phrase or two to make it distinct from other horror movies that are about also stopping demons or creatures or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, but the main thing and, and the reason a logline is valuable for you to formulate is it forces you to think about those three basic things in your script. And I swear I've read scripts and talked to people and heard pitches by people who don't really have never really thought about what's the goal. They just have, this is about a person in a situation and then they do this and then they do that. And then this happens and that happens. It's like, but what do we want? What are we rooting for? So a log line forces you to identify those three elements. Now, in today's world, it's not only just about the feature film anymore. It's also about series. There's, I think, 450 series being produced this year alone. Uh, so what's the big difference between pitching a feature film versus pitching a series? Well, uh, on one level, it's not all that different mm-hmm. because it's it's kind of – the way I think of it is this, you're pitching a series, but you're pitching it by detailing a lot of what would be in the pilot or the first episode of the series, mm-hmm. because that's when we meet the hero. That, so that's when the hero is set up. That's when we first have to empathize. That's when whatever the opportunity is that is going to drive that, that whole series, mm-hmm. if it's an ongoing story, like, say, Breaking Bad or mm-hmm. Game of Thrones – that opportunity has to occur to some extent in the first episode because otherwise nothing's happening. Then Mm -hmm. it's just a one hour setup. If it's, let's say you're pitching a more traditional series, you know, one of the uh, NCIS or something Mm -hmm. like castle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you're just pitching a pilot because you introduce the characters and they have a goal that they have to accomplish at the end of that episode. So what you do is you think about that episode and then you kind of expand to say, so this is, so imagine these two people, a mystery writer and a woman cop. And when a body is discovered and they are thrown together, now they have to solve the murder. And each week, and so you then connect it by saying, and each week, or if it's an ongoing thing, you say, so the overarching story is about a, a cop who has to stop a hitman uh, from committing a series of murders in her town. That's, that's the series of Fargo. Mm-hmm. So if you take the first season of Fargo, the overarching goal is the cop has to stop the hitman. Mm-hmm. And then... But then what you do is you then the one thing you want to add is in. So in one episode, this might be by might happen. But as but by the end of the first season, this will have happened. So you clearly convey that you've not just thought about three episodes. Well, you've not just thought about the opening, but what the ongoing story is going to be and what some of the other characters are going to be woven through it. So I guess the answer would be there's some more detail to add, but you still want to make sure you hit those elements and you still want to have seeds. You still, except now you're not going to pick feature films. You're going to pick successful series that are similar. Now, is there, do you have an example of a pitch that was, that blew you away or do you remember one at at all? (laughs) 
I mean, I'm, no. I don't know. I don't, probably not, but I'm just no. asking. I didn't know there'd be a test. I, <laughs> I honestly don't because uh, to convey why it blew me away, uh, I would have to really remember it and present it to you so Got I could it. point out this is this is all the the, the, the reasoning things. in the class. I I construct an example of a pitch that illustrates all of these things. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's that's when I made up for a movie that's never been written, just as an example. Got it. Um, but if I guess I guess I can't keep stumbling along and try and pretend I have any answer. Other you, than can no. No. you can say no. You can say no. I don't it's fine. A great pitch. <laughs> I remember I've heard great pitches, but I don't remember what they exactly said. Now, do you have any final words of wisdom as far as pitching your story? Yeah, <laughs> I have hundreds. We don't have time for all okay, of them. That's but, why we want people to sign up for the course. Of or, course, of course, or read the book, book of course. Because there's all that. Um, let Oh, yes, I do. I, I have one last thing I want to add, and sure. that is some uh, is about a couple of things in terms of the presentation, mm-hmm. and that is notes and nervousness. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When it comes to notes, I strongly recommend that you take note cards and on those note cards in big letters with a, um, what do they, co- what do they call that? A, you know, a, a, a grease pen, they used to call it or something sure, like sure. that, a Sharpie. Sure. With a Sharpie, you just write down keywords that will remind you of that step in your pitch. So it might be, if how you got the idea is you're going to refer to two antecedents, just write down the antecedents. And then on card number two is your, so what if, in other words, it's not something you have to look at steadily, but you want to have that as a backup, even though you've rehearsed your, your pitch. By the way, what you absolutely never want to do is read somebody a pitch. Mm. Just when I coach people on their pitch, I won't let them read their pitch to me even when I'm coaching them unless there's no other choice because it is so hard to concentrate when someone's reading to you. You have to be ready to say it as a conversation. You have to re- be like an actor. You have to rehearse it so much that you can just make it natural. You can make it into a conversation. But note cards are a good idea because if you have that backup, then you probably won't need to use it. The other thing is when it comes to nervousness, stop worrying about it or trying to think of a magic way that you won't be nervous because you will be. Just accept, (laughs) just say to yourself, of course I'm nervous. I'm not used to doing this. I'm meeting somebody. This is important to me. They're in power and I haven't met them before, et cetera. So of course I'm going to be nervous. And here's what I would tell you. I have worked in Hollywood now for more than 35 years. I've talked to a lot of executives, a lot of agents. I've heard them speak and I've had conversations. Never in my entire career have I ever heard somebody say, God, I heard this great pitch this movie would make millions it's one of the best i've ever heard unfortunately we're not going to option it because the writer was so nervous because (laughs) here's the thing right to to put it bluntly they don't give a shit right they are they are there their job is find me a good story they want your story to be good they don't care one whit if you're nervous, if you stumble, if anything. They're looking for a story they can take back to their boss and mm-hmm. uh, put a feather in their cap if they, if you, if they can say, you got to look at this because this is a terrific idea. This is the terrific story or, or they'll go back, read the script, and then they'll say that. So take note cards and don't worry about being nervous because it's not an issue. Michael, thank you so much for sharing a lot about pitching today. And I know, again, it's such a mysterious uh, art form. And hopefully the course uh, that we're putting out uh, called uh, How to Pitch Your Story in 60 Seconds uh, and your book, uh, story, uh, please uh, name your book again. Okay. Story. It's, it's tricky because they sound the same. The story is selling your story in 60 seconds right? because the book is designed for screenwriters and novelists because they're both in the situation of trying to get their material read. Our course 
is called pitching your screenplay in 60 seconds because the course is zeroing in specifically on screenwriters. Michael, thank you again so much for being on the show again. It's an absolute pleasure as always talking to you, my friend. Yeah, and it went so fast. We probably, we've probably been talking for three hours. I'm sorry if that's the case, but it's like, what we're done, there's so much more to say. I love hearing myself talk. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to listen to myself. My greatest joy. Thank you, Michael. Okay, take care. Alex. Well, I hope you have a better idea on how to pitch your story or screenplay uh, in less than 60 seconds. Uh, after listening to Michael and his knowledge bombs he dropped. So thanks again, Michael, for sharing your knowledge as always. And as promised, guys, I have a special discount for you guys. Normally, we are selling the course at 175 bucks, but because you're listening to this episode and you're part of the tribe, you get it for $12. And it is well worth it, guys. So all you got to do is go to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash pitch 60. That's IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash P-I-T-C-H and the number 60 or 60. And that will give you a a coupon code. It'll take you directly to the course on Udemy. And if you guys have not taken the other course, the Story Blueprint, The Heroes Two Journeys by Michael and Chris, uh, then I will have in the show notes a link to that course with a special discount as well. The show notes are at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 205. Now, guys, I hope you are enjoying your holiday month in December. I have been a very busy bee working on all this stuff that I'm putting together for you guys in January. And January is going to be epic. I can't even tell you. Starting off with the Ask Alex show, which will be 31 days. I don't know how I'm doing it, but 31 days on our YouTube channel where we'll be answering questions from the tribe. And it's it's pretty insane. That alone, not to mention all the craziness that we're going to be doing at Sundance. We're going to be releasing a epic new course as well, um, which I'll talk to you about in a little bit, but not yet. I'm just trying to give you guys as many tools as you can get for the new year and to get that new year 2018 started off right and following your dreams, getting that film made, writing that screenplay and whatever I could do to help you, that's why I'm here. So, so guys, thank you for listening. And as always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 